Let's get started. Go ahead and hit ignition. We'll pump on. And low starter. Put them under NG. Past 14%. We're going to introduce our fuel. And start counting up. Usually takes 12 seconds to start. We're looking at our NG, making sure it's passing up 35, so we don't have a hunk start. Watch our ITT now. Make sure it doesn't go into the yellow. 560. All right, let's have them take off the power cart. Today it's 6 in the morning, yet another dawn departure to WeWAC today. It's an hour and 15 minute flight. All right, fuel caps and selectors. Un controls. And our weight in here. We're at 72.20 today. The max weight on this is 72.55, so we're pretty much at gross weight, just a couple pounds under it. For our VREF, if we did have to come back in, 75 pounds, or correction, 75 knots, it's too early. And 63 knots on rotation speed. We're going to be cruising at 1 1,000 today. They have my flight plan in. There's a little bit of fog off to the southeast of the field, and I can see about seven miles that way to the mountains. I can see the ridges. There's a little bit of fog and some clouds, but should be able to still get out VFR this morning. All right, flaps are set, indicated, and verified. Thames are set up. Let's go ahead and give Tower a call. Good morning, Garoka Tower, November Tango Kilo. Request taxi, WEWAC, 1 POE. Tango Kilo, Rosa, taxi for run 17 right, then a bank track 17 left for right. Kilo nature 0020 and time check 02. 0020, clear to backtrack 17 left for 17 right, November Tango Kilo. Alright, we're going to do our governor check as we're pulling out onto the runway. Just pushing the button down. Thank you, POB. One POB. Roger. Alright, Governor check works. Oops, and landing light on. And if we do need to stop on the runway, full reverse, heavy braking. Ups up, cut off, pull off, shut off. If we're going off after takeoff, we're going to pitch for 85. Consider EPL. If that doesn't work, we're going to go ahead and feather it straight ahead, probably down to the road. I'll pull off, shut off, 80 full flaps, made a call to the tower, hit our emergency button, crack our door, and brace. Our abort is done, ignition inlet and lights. Ignition inlet and lights are all done. Furnaces are done, it's 20 degrees Celsius out, which I think it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. It's literally the exact same temperature every single morning of the year. Well, not every year, every day. During the summer months, like June, July, August, is our dry season. November take a kilo right take off. No kilo, take a right in. I'm sorry, say again? A right in, clip for take off. Clip for take off, right turn, November take a kilo. And during those months, it gets down to the, like, the high 40s, mornings. All right, harnesses high idle. Ignition condition, flaps 20. Pull on harnesses. Was complete. Looks like fog, I do have the instrument departure already set up. I am full weight nearly, so I'm not going to be able to maneuver quite as easy, so. All right, rotate is at 63. 1690 on the torque. Airs rotate 63. Now that we're getting up here, it looks like I have enough room easily to maneuver. I'm still staying VFR. So there's like one little tiny cloud you couldn't see over top of it, but now as I'm getting up over top of it, you can see over just fine. 
bring our ITT back onto 740. It's a 742 right now, so just barely, barely over it. We're 90 and increasing. We're going to go ahead and reduce our flaps. To reduce our flaps, the nose wants to come down, so we're going to be pulling a little bit of back pressure. So if you just counteract it with some little bit of trim, it makes it easier. Once we're over, 95, around 80, 85 and then 90 on the knots before I do that. So now we're at zero degrees. Again, we're just going to pull a little bit of trim back. Pops down to 2,000 RPM. Our ITT set at 720 for the climb out. As our speed increases also, we're going to take a little bit of the right rudder trim out that we had. I had all rudder trim in. I'm going to go ahead and make my turn. All right, looking through the clouds, it looks like there's just this little layer right here, maybe around a thousand. I should probably just be able to pop right through this little hole right here with no issues and head out that way to the north towards a wee whack. Right now that we're just popping through, go ahead and set my course now that we're clear of the weather right here. 6.09 on the departure, so our next reporting point is going to be in 40 minutes. Broken Tower, November Tango, Kilo, departed time 0 9 -er. We'll be tracking 320 on climb, not above 1-2000. Estimating overhead by UE 50. Tango, Kilo. Kilo. Hello, good job. Contact me in 1-2-0-1 or 3 well, ended up being like now three layers of different sets of clouds. I thought there was one. Now I'm just sitting kind of maneuvering back around so I don't have to go way, way, way south of the field where it's already beautiful. I'm just kind of just staying on the edge of the clouds. Now I'm finally above it at 8,400, so about 3,000 feet above the field. I don't know if you can see it down here, but there's three or four different layers. And getting out the next gap, it looks like there's some clouds on the mountains, but it looks like I should be able to get past it once I'll be at least 12,000 feet by the time I get to those mountains. I should be able to get through those VFR and then be on my way. Once I get over those, it's just kind of flat plains of PG's jungle and I have no issues whatsoever. All right, once we're out, we're gonna go ahead and turn off our lights, put our bypass, our inertial separator to normal, turn off our ignition. So our ITT right here is set at 720 for a climb out. Our props are at 2000 and just now passing 1-1000 one for 1-2000 another thousand foot to go. So on this particular flight, I'm heading to WeWAC. I had to do a dawn departure because I've got some passengers there that need to come back and fly out of the country today. And their plane is coming to Garoka just after like nine o'clock, like very shortly after nine o'clock, I'm gonna be coming back. It's six, I should be there by 7.15, get out of there by um, fueled up for round trip, so I should be able to get out of there in probably 20 minutes. And then come back, so I should be getting back by 9 o'clock at the latest. Absolute latest. So they need to get back and be on their airplane. I think their airplane comes at around 9.30. So, it's pretty critical that they get on this flight and then I'm able to get back into Garoka. So that they can down to Port Moresby and get out of the country today. All right, we just leveled off at 12,000. As you can see, my turn coordinator there is all the way off to the left is because as you're in a climb, you have a lot of right rudder pressure. And as you level off, your, your speed increases, your angle of attack decreases, all those P factors that are making the airplane want to pull to the left are no longer there. So now we're going to have to take out that right rudder pressure to bring that ball, essentially, uh, the line in this airplane, right back into the center. 
so that we're coordinated, so that we're not flying kind of sideways in the air. All right, we are coming through the gap where we're supposed to call up a dang. Just like Flight Watch in the States, we're just telling them where I am. My next reporting points. So we're leveled off now. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my power settings back to my cruise power settings. Our ITT is gonna be brought down and we're looking for a torque, the number on the top, at 1250. As long as the ITT is below 700, that is fine. Now, if the ITT starts getting above 700, the higher we go, then we're gonna to wanna to actually limit our ITT just to 700 and not worry about the torque. The higher we go, the torque is gonna continually go down. All right, we are over the gap where we need to call up our next person. So we're gonna go ahead and call up Medang, which is like Flight Watch in the States flight following, we're just going to let them know where we are, so that in our next reporting point. Medang 120 Decimal 1, November Tango Kilo position. Tango Medang 1, go ahead. Morning, November Tango Kilo, Osaloka, maintaining 1-2000 overhead, my UE 54. Tango 1-2000, uh, Henry Units 1009, not very poor. Well, again, my UE 1267, if not more than KTF. 3419 or 653. 267 or 3419, my UE1 09 or no. All right, we are nearly at top of descent now. We are 43 miles out from. We've got a weather report for WEWAC and it sounds like it's clear and calm and really nice, but it looks like we have a little bit of weather to get there in between there for the next maybe 20 miles, possibly just on a descent. If there aren't any storms or anything like that, it's just clouds. Oh, I'm going to show you real quick. I've already got up, set up my descent rate in here, but I'm going to show you how I did it. All right, first things first, we're going to go ahead and hit our flight plan button. Hit the cursor button highlight it, and then head over to our altitude right here. And we're gonna wanna set in, I set in a thousand feet because that's gonna be my pattern altitude because it is sea level. I'm gonna hit enter and come all the way down to my vertical speed target. I like to do 800 feet per minute and then I just hit enter again. That's gonna put this little top of descent thing right there, which is gonna chime us to let us know when to start our descent. But we do have some clouds coming up Typically, if there is clouds and you are in a descent, I'm going to want to be closer to my VA, my maneuvering speed, depending on how bumpy the clouds are going to be. These clouds don't really look that bumpy ahead of us because they're not really built up like really, really high. They don't have really sharp, sharp edges. They're kind of puffy, but I think, honestly, we might even be able to wiggle our way through them and we'll know once we actually get a little bit closer. Oh, I'm not expecting to have to do any type of instrument approach just because I've already got a weather report on the ground saying that it's clear. So more than likely this is just the mountain range that is depicted by this brown section right here. There's always clouds along the mountains and it actually stops right there. So if I wanted to I could just cut around the end of the mountains and then just go up coastal. But it really doesn't matter to me because it's, it doesn't really look that bad. Vertical track. All right. Betty's letting us know to head her down, so we're going to go ahead and turn our altitude bug all the way down to a thousand feet. If for some reason we're still IMC through there, I'm actually going to put 3,000 to 100 because that's my minimum safe. Give our vertical speed and put it down 700 and then let it catch up to itself and then I'll click over to 800 because this autopilot is not awesome. All right, once I've got that in, I'm going to hold down the altitude, the altitude select button and then hit VS. And that's going to capture my altitude once I get to there. As we're increasing our airspeed now, I'm going to take out a little bit of the right rudder pressure so we don't need it as much on our descent. I'm going to scroll out and you're going to see this little blue arc right here. And what that blue arc is showing me is where I'm going to get to my target altitude. So like I said, I have 3,100 feet into my altitude just for my minimum safe just in case I am IMC as I'm going through the clouds over the mountains right after I get past these mountains I guarantee you it's going to go 
clear up because 99% of the time it's clear over the water. All right, we are 10 minutes out, 30 miles to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do a position report to let anybody know in WeWAC that I'm coming in. All stations to WeWAC, 126 decimal seven, Kodiak November, Tango Kilo, three zero miles to the southeast. Passing 10,500 on descent circuit, WeWAC, two five. Ahead and start our checklist up here. All right, first things first is, let's make get this thing focused. Caps and selectors. Caps and selectors are good. Brakes are good. Taws and yaws. Taws buttons down here. We're not going to do anything with that. We don't use our yaw dampener. Our vertical speed, or I'm sorry, our uh, VREF. We're going to come over to our AUX page. Our landing weight is 6,190. We're right at 72 knots. So what we're going to do is come over here, put our V-Ref in at 72 knots, come back up here, and click that off. Do lights and inlet and all the rest here shortly. Because it is in the morning, clouds here in Papua New Guinea are usually not that bumpy. They might have a little bit of bumps here and there, but typically not that bad in the morning unless it's actually a storm storm, but this is not. This is just full of clouds that are probably going to oh, build up into a storm here in the next probably three hours. All right, looks like we just broke out. I can nearly see all the way down to the ocean. There now, starting to see the coastline a little bit. Just under this layer looks to be maybe around 6,000, so we should be able to pop through that. I'm going to go ahead and increase my descent rate so I can get through it quicker. Reduce my power just to keep my airspeed down. Just in case there are some bumps, I'm not that much further away from my VA, which is my maneuvering speed. All right, now that we are broken out, I can see the coast. I can actually even see the airport now. I'm going to go ahead and turn my altitude bug all the way down to 1,000. And then I'm going to look at my blue line and find out what kind of descent I actually need to do to get to where I want to. So 1,000 feet, I'm not going to obviously want it right, right over the field. They, there's no one here flying at all today. Um, I'm planning on just doing a straight in. The wind looks like it's coming out of the west. It shows right down here, 10 knots, more or less right out of the west. So we're gonna go ahead and land on runway 28. But where the blue line is right now is a really good spot. It's a little bit further away from actually where I wanna be. That way I can get to my 1,000 feet, slow down, get all my flaps in, and be able to still be on glide slope three miles out or so. All right, we are 10 miles out. We're gonna go ahead and do our landing light. We're gonna go ahead and put our pulse light on as well. Those are just pulse lights on the wing. I just go back and forth, and make us a little bit more visible. We still have inlet to go, but we have to be below 140 knots to be able to do that. So we can talk about our go around if we had to. If we had to go around for any reason, something on the runway, or for any reason, what we're gonna do is power up basically the top needle up to the top of the green on my torque, 20 degrees of flap, pitch for 73, which is our VX, best angle of climb out, and then reset our torque to 740 ITT. Straight out, come back around, and land again. I'll station the WeWag, Cody X7, take a kilo eight miles to the southeast, passing 2,400. Circuit 25, tracking straight in, runway 28, WeWag. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put my OBS on. This runway I don't need to, but I do this on a lot of them. And then I twist my OBS to my runway heading, and what that does, as you can see right down here in this little window, is it actually draws a line for the runway. Now this is really great if you're going into places that you've never been before, and just trying to draw a picture in your head. It's a little bit harder sometimes. We use it because when you're flying in the jungles, and there's 100, 100 foot trees and it goes all the way around your runway. You can be like an eighth of a mile from the runway and you don't even see it because it's just tucked away in the trees. So that's why we use it. But it is a good habit to get into, especially if you're going into places that you've never been to. It's just a really nice, easy, great picture to see. All right, five miles out, we're gonna go ahead and put our props forward. Get our harnesses. Circuit we want cancels are. 
Notch of flaps. SAR is done. We're below 140. Bypass is on. Flaps to go. 120, 20 degrees of flaps, and turning final. Below 108 knots, full flaps, and checklist is complete. Really, really nice day out here in WeWAC. I guess they have some really good surfing down here and also up there. I haven't had a chance to do any yet. 500. All right, our V ref is 72 knots, so we're just going to continue reducing our power, pitching up a little bit, so we're pitching for airspeed, power for altitude. All right, looks like the wind is calm. Full of small birds. All right, low idle, flaps to 20. Just getting the plane ready for the next takeoff and adjusting all of my trims so that it's ready for takeoff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this flight. Uh, if you did, consider subscribing. I'd like to put out content every week, so be sure to come back and check out my channel. Leave a comment down below if you enjoy this kind of content. Can't think of anything else to say. Just type yes. Let us know that hey, this is something that's interesting, or if you think it's kind of boring. Just type no. I don't really care. But I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. Uh, thanks for joining me on this flight, though, and uh, have a great day.